Introduction Forces and couples acting on the beam cause bending or flexural stresses and sharing stresses on any cross section of the beam and deflection perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the beam. If couples are applied to the ends of the beam and no forces act on it, the bending is said to be pure bending. If forces produce the bending, the bending is called ordinary bending. Flexure formula. Stresses caused by the bending moment are known as flexural or bending stresses. A simply supported beam with a hinge and a ruler and a load. And we have the deflection of the beam caused by the load and the top of the beam will cause compression while the bottom of the beam will cause tension. And here is the diagram for the cross-sectional area of the beam. So this will be your tension at the bottom of the beam and top of the beam will cause compression. So we have the neutral axis and from the neutral axis to the top of the beam is C while Y is from the neutral axis to any specific point value for bending stress. And for compression, we have the maximum bending stress top of the beam, while at the bottom of the beam will cause maximum bending stress for tension. So the formula for bending stress is equal to or F sub B is equal to MY all over I. And this is the cross section and we have a moment and this will be our neutral axis from neutral axis up to the top of the beam and this is the stresses or the bending stress that is in compression while at the bottom of the neutral axis we have the stresses which is in tension and at the bottom of the beam is the maximum bending stress for tension. So this will be the upper region that is compressed and the lower region that is stretched or tension. And for the maximum bending stress, we have the formula F sub B maximum is equal to MC over I, where M is the bending moment F sub B is the flexural stress or bending stress. I is equal to the centroidal moment of inertia. And C is the distance from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber. Or the maximum distance from the neutral axis. That's C. And for section modulus, F sub B maximum is equal to MC over I or M over I over C and the ratio I over C is called the section modulus and is usually denoted by S. The maximum bending stress may then be written as maximum bending stress or F sub B maximum is equal to M over S. Example Determine the minimum height H of the beam shown if the flexural stress is not to exceed 20 megapascal. So we have the cross-sectional area or the beam size which is 80 millimeter and we need to find the height. And we have the beam, we have the uniform load of 2.5 kilonewton per meter and a concentrated load of 5 kilonewton meter. And we have a simply supported beam with R1 and R2. First, we need to find the value for the reaction R1 and R2. Summation of moment at 1 is equal to 0. So we have the uniform load, which is 2.5, and the total length is 1 plus 3 or 4 meters, and then the resultant is at 2 meters halfway, 
so which means this will be the resultant and the value from this point up to point 1 is equivalent to 1 meter so this is equivalent to 1 meter and the direction is clockwise direction and it is positive next we have a concentrated load of 5 kN so we have 5 kN and the distance from this point up to point 1 is also 1 meter and the direction is clockwise direction which is also positive next we have the reaction at point 2 or R2 so we have R2 and the distance from point 2 to point 1 is equivalent to 3 meters so we multiplied by 3 and the direction is counterclockwise to point 1 so this is negative sign and equate that to 0 R2 is equivalent to 2.5 times 4 plus 5 and then we divide by 3 and the value for R2 is equivalent to 5 kilonewton and then summation of forces along y is equal to 0 to find the value for R1 so we have a uniform load which is 2.5 and the total length is 4 meters and the direction is downward so negative sign and a concentrated load of 5 kilonewton and the direction is also downward so negative 5 the reaction 1 which is upward so R sub 1 and reaction R2 which is 5 kN and it is upward direction so therefore it is plus 5 and equate that to 0 so therefore R sub 1 is negative 2 times 2.5 times 4 is negative 10 minus 5 is negative 15 plus 5 or negative 10 so R1 is equal to 10 kN and the direction is upward direction same as R1 R2 so R1 is 10 kN so this will be 10 kN and R2 is 5 kN and we find the value for moment using shear and moment diagram so first shear diagram so zero and this is for shear and this is for moment and first at point we have a uniform load of 2.5 up to point 1 so 2.5 times 1 is equivalent to 2.5 kilonewton so we have negative 2.5 so this will be negative 2.5 and horizontal next is diagonal line so from 0 up to negative 2.5 and it is diagonal next from negative 2.5 we have reaction 1 of 10 kilonewton upward so 10 minus 2.5 and this will be 7.5 and it is positive so 7.5 kilonewton and this will be kilonewton and from 7.5 we have a uniform load up to the concentrated load and 2.5 times the distance 1 meter which is also 2.5 so 7.5 and downward minus 2.5 and the value is 5 and it is positive so this will be 5 kN from this point we have a concentrated load of 5 kN downward so 5 kN minus 5 kN the value is 0 and by the way we have the shape horizontal and next one is diagonal so 7.5 up to 5 kN and it is diagonal next so we have the value for at this point we have 0 and from this point up to point 2 we have a uniform load of 2.5 and the distance is 2 so 2.5 times 2 
is equivalent to 5. And 5 kilonewton meter or 5 kilonewton and the direction is downward. So this will be 5 and negative 5 kilonewton. Horizontal, the shape is diagonal. From 0 up to negative 5 and it is diagonal. And from point 2 we have negative 5 kilonewton and the reaction 2 is also 5 kilonewton positive. So 5 minus 5 and the value is 0. So we have the shaded area and identify that area 1 for the small triangle so this will be area 1 the trapezoid area 2 and the triangle which is area 3 and we solve for area 1 up to area 3 so area 1 is a triangle which is 1 half times base times height or 1 half of negative 2 negative 2.5 and the distance is 1 meter and the value is negative 2.5 divided by 2 is negative 1.25 the unit is kilonewton meter next area 2 area 2 is a trapezoid so the formula is 1 half times the summation of bases b1 plus b2 and multiplied by height or 1 half of 7.5 plus 5 and multiplied by the distance which is also 1 meter so 7.5 plus 5 and then divide by 2 the value is 6.25 kilonewton meter and area 3 which is a triangle so 1 half of the height which is negative 5 and multiplied by the distance which is 2 meters and the value is negative 5 times 2 is negative 10 divided by 2 or negative 5 kilonewton meter from 0 we have area 1 which is negative 1.25 and the value is negative so this will be negative so negative 1.25 kilonewton meter and the shape is horizontal diagonal and curved and it is concave downward so from 0 up to negative 1.25 next from negative 1.25 we have area 2 which is 6.25 positive so 6.25 minus 1.25 the value is 5 and it is positive so this is 5 kilonewton meter positive and the shape horizontal diagonal and concave downward from negative 1.25 up to 5 and last area 3 so we have area 3 is negative 5 so 5 kilonewton meter minus area 3 which is negative 5 the value is 0 at point 2 and the shape is horizontal diagonal and concave downward so 5 kilonewton up to 0 and that's it the maximum moment is equal to 5 kilonewton meter so this will be the shaded area
and the maximum moment is 5 kN meter. We need to find the value for H using flexural stress formula. So Fv is equals to mc over i and this will be equation 1. So we have the value for Fb which is 20 megapascal m which is the maximum moment or 5 kilonewton meter and we convert that to newton millimeter by multiplying 1000 squared or this will be 5 times 10 to the power 6 newton millimeter next c the height h and the neutral axis for the rectangular is one half up to the top which is c and the value is one half of the height or h and i for a rectangular beam the formula for moment of inertia is bd cube all over 12 and the base is 80 millimeter and the depth is h cube all over 12 and this will be 20 over 3 h cube for i so we have i c m and f b the unknown is h at 1 f b is 20 equate that to m which is 5 times 10 to the power 6 and multiplied by c which is one half of h and we divide by i or 20 over 3 h cubed and we cancel out h and h it will be squared so 5 times 10 to the power 6 cube uh, times 6 times 10 to the power 6 multiplied by 0.5 and we divide by 20 and divide by 20 times 3 we have h squared is equals to 18,750 and we find the value for h the square root of 18,750 is equivalent to 137 millimeter so the height of the beam is equivalent to 137 millimeter